Hey everybody, this is Alex Reset from AlexResetCoder.com and this is a follow-up video on Vue. So in my first sort of quick start video on Vue, um, basically we kind of went over how to set up a Vue instance. So a Vue instance kind of like looks at one area of your HTML, allows you to interpolate data, use Vue directives, all sorts of really cool stuff. But where Vue gets really powerful is when you start using components. You start taking chunks of your user interface and making them these self-contained HTML tags. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here I just have your basic setup. So here I have the view CDN. I have my app.js with a defer tag. Make sure that it doesn't run until after the DOM loads. And then we have our app div that will be, you know, being viewed. That's going to be basically exposed to the view instance. And then we have our view instance. But here, I only have the element property. As long as I have that, then basically view will be watching what's going on inside this div. And one way to create a component is to globally register it, which means I'm going to use a function like this, view.component with a lowercase. And it works a lot like creating a view instance. The only difference is at first I have to pass a, a sort of tag name. So we'll just say hello world. And then you pass it an object, which this object is going to have all the same properties as the instance does, plus a few extra ones. So first, let's go over the main extra one, which is template. The template is going to be essentially the HTML that's used when this component's used. So we'll create something simple. H1, hello world, H1. So now whenever I use this component, I should see an H1 with hello world. So now since it's globally registered, this view instance should be able to use that component. So I just create a hello world. And there we go. There's hello world. So let me open this in the browser. And what do I see? Hello world. There's the component. Okay, so if I, if I and basically what happens is that view is rendering the template wherever it sees the component. So if I go control shift I and I go into elements and I look in the div here, I see h1 hello world. I don't see the hello world tag. But if I go to the sources and look at the source index, there, there you see the hello world tag. Okay? So view is making that adjustment. It basically sees the tag and then replaces it with the template. Okay? So that's essentially how that works. Um, cool. Now let's show you some other cool things you can do with it. Another feature that's kind of unique to components, not to the view instance, um, because of the way it works, is props. Now props, you pass in an array. <coughs> an array of strings of what these props are called. Props is short for properties. If you've used React, you're probably very familiar with props. If you haven't, let's just talk about this whole concept. Um, it exists in all the three, all the main frameworks, uh, front-end frameworks, Svelte, Angular, Vue, React, um, and basically the idea is that since these components are like HTML tags, HTML tags have properties or attributes, so you can pass data as attributes um, to your component. So let's say we just have a property called cheese, okay? Cool, so that just means that this property called cheese, it'll look to see if there's a prop or attribute called cheese. And I can use that like I could use my data. So I can now do this, I can... I should be able to use normal interpolation syntax here. Um, cheese. Okay, and I need to then now I can what I can do is I can pass in the prop. So it just looks like an HTML attribute. So cheese equals Gouda. And so because when I created the component, I made it to look for the cheese prop on the HTML tag like this it now gets that value okay so now when I go back to the HTML see it says Gouda because it's receiving that prop so see the template doesn't say Gouda but because I have the prop and then I passed in a value and the cool thing about that is now I can use this component multiple times and use different and pass in different props and get different results provolone monster when I go back to the HTML okay right now it's only rendering once but 
generally should generally should be able to render more than one time. Okay. Cool. I have a feeling it's just because it wants me to do a closing tag. So let's do that. Slash hello world. Oh, you did it already for me. Okay, let's see if that does the trick. Yep, that did the trick. So Gouda Provolone Munster. So see, it's the same component, but in three different ways. So when you think about like a much more robust component that has like built-in styling and functionality, you know, you pass in a few props, you can make it a really reusable piece of UI. And just like before, this has all the features that a normal instance does. So I can create a data property, that, but the, and this is another quirk. Um, when we're using the view instance, we just pass in an object as data. But when it's a view component, you have to pass in a function as data. So you're going to pass in a function that returns an object. And you just have to do it. It's just the way work view works. It's the way they have to, what they have to do to make this work. And then you put your data there. So I can put something in here called like hello, which will see like hello string. Okay, and then I can refer to it up here. Hello. Hello. Okay, and now if I go back over here, well, I did something wrong. So let me think about this template. Hello. Just make sure this object is on the same line. Hello. Yeah, that should work. Yep, and there it is. Hello, Gouda. Hello, Provolone. Hello, Munster. Okay. So you can start mixing and matching all these different things. Um, and again, in your template, in this string, you can pass in, you know, use all your directives, v model, v ifs, v shows, uh, etc. You know, it's just pa basically passing in the HTML that will be there uh, in all its glory. I can have methods that works the same way. I can have well, just the methods object. I can have all my lifecycle functions before create all that stuff's in there cool and then just one other thing that I didn't mention in the previous video it's also something that you can do in the view instance you can have what's called a computed value okay uh, and I think let me just remember what the key is for that uh, let's go to the view thing here and where is the computed value Here we go. Computed. Ah, computed properties. That's what I want. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Computed. And what computed properties are, are values that are computed. So, for example, let's say I have something in my. Um, let's do this. So, let's say I have age here. So, my age is 35. Okay, and then in our template, we're going to add a form field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, that's fine, we'll just do this. Input text equals number. And then I'm going to v model equals and bind that to the age. Okay. And this is why you should generally use backticks for your templates. That way you can use quotations in the middle. There we go. So hello, cheese, input text num text equals number. V model equals age. So there's going to be an input there now. And whenever I change that input, it should change age. Okay, and in, in computed, we have an object of properties. We're going to have double age as one property. But the thing is that these are actually functions. So it's going to contain a function that returns a value, and that's what double age is. So <coughs> here I can write, I'm going to interpolate age. And then I'm also going to interpolate double age. Okay, and then what this function will do 
is that these functions trigger every time my data changes. So when my data changes, these things recalculate themselves. If the data doesn't change, it doesn't recalculate. So in this case, um, what we're doing is we're taking this dot age, my age, times two, and that's what we're returning. So we're going to return this age times two. So now every time age updates, this function will run again, and then computed this double age value becomes whatever double my age is at that time. So now if I go back to the website, see we see 3570. Let's see here, where's that input tag? Oh, the input tag doesn't show up. So let's go fix that. Uh, input. Uh, input text equals number. One, I think I may need a closing tag or a closing slash to see if that does the difference. Nope. And I think I need to wrap this all up in one element, kind of like in React. So let's just try that. Slash div. Let's see if that does the trick. Yep, that does the trick. Okay, so now let's try this. And this is supposed to be a number. Did I write text? Number. So these are backticks now, so I should be able to knock this all over. So when you're using backticks, the beauty of backticks is you can actually break the string over across multiple lines. You can't do that with like normal quotation marks. Um, so let's do that. Okay, whatever. 67. So see, when I changed this to 67, function doubled the, the function doubled the number, so double age became 134. If I change my age to 2, see so it becomes 4. So the cool thing is, if you have certain things that need to be calculated, like certain values that are dependent on your data, but they need to be calculated every time, you have that computed values property. And it recalculates every time, but only, but it doesn't recalculate every time, only when the data changes. So when this dot age changes, then it's going to recalculate double age. So computer properties, that's a pretty neat feature. Um, cool. I think that's pretty good for one video. I'll see you guys later on. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more oomph on how you can use Vue. And you guys have a great day and enjoy.